In this video, we're going to find the location where the force of gravity from the Earth on uh, an object, say the Apollo spacecraft, uh, has the same size as the force of gravity from the Moon on the Apollo spacecraft and in opposite directions. So if this was a non-dynamical situation, just objects sitting in space, this would be an equilibrium point. Uh, so I'm not commenting on orbits or uh, you know other interesting things about uh, the Moon's sphere of influence in space. This is just a simple calculation. Where does the force of gravity from the Earth on an object uh, balance out the force of gravity from the Moon on an object, on that same object, on a straight line in between the Earth and the Moon? So might be nice to make a diagram. This is not to scale. Um, but the distance from the Earth to the Moon, I'm going to call that R, is 3.84 times 10 to the fifth kilometers. And I have X as the distance from the center of the Earth to the Apollo spacecraft. The remaining distance from the Apollo spacecraft to the center of the Moon then is this distance from Earth to Moon minus X. So those are the two important numbers that allow us to calculate the, the force and in symbols. Um, so the force of gravity, Newton's law of gravity, has a universal constant of gravitation, capital G, the mass of the two objects uh, also in the numerator, and we divide by the distance squared. So on the left here, we're uh, putting in symbols how we would calculate the force of gravity from the Earth on the Apollo spacecraft, E for Earth, A for Apollo spacecraft. On the right side is the gravitational force due to the moon. So mass of the moon, same spacecraft over here. And the distance is a calculation. It's the distance from the Earth to the moon minus x. Again, x is from the center of the Earth to the center of the Apollo spacecraft. So the force of gravity to the left from the Earth, force of gravity to the right from the moon. And those two are going to balance. So now we can uh, simplify in the next step here. Capital G is the same on both sides. It's a constant. The mass of the Apollo spacecraft is the same on both sides. So I've uh, removed those. Let's put in some numbers and see how we uh, start to analyze this situation. So when I put in the numbers, I am also uh, cross-multiplying, if you would want to say that. Uh, so this. Uh, formula we have over here, mass of the Earth, that's 5.97 approximately, times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And then the uh, denominator over here, REM minus X quantity squared, I'm multiplying that on M sub E, mass of the Earth. And I've put in the distance from the Earth to the Moon, then minus this unknown X, that quantity will be squared. On the right side, mass of the moon, 7.3 times 10 to the 22nd, and multiplying by x squared on both sides delivers uh, x squared, and we no longer have any fractions. Now, what simplification can we make in uh, the numbers? Well, I have 10 to the 24th on the left. I have 10 to the 22nd as a factor on the right. So I'll divide both sides by 10 to the 22nd. That would leave a 10 to the second power here. When we divide 10 to the 24th by 10 to the 22nd, we subtract the powers, 24 minus 22. And then I've moved the decimal here. So instead of 5.97 times 10 to the second, I'm writing 597. And next, in the square brackets here, I'm going and I'm doing the square process. So we have to take this 3.84 times 10 to the fifth times itself. That's this number. And then 3.84 times 10 to the fifth times minus x, and again, 3.84 times 10 to the fifth times minus x. That produces this middle term. And then lastly, minus x times minus x produces plus x squared. So what we're doing is we're taking uh, 3.84 times 10 to the fifth minus x, that quantity, multiplied by 3.84 times 10 to the minus fifth minus x, that quantity again and distributing. We create three terms when we do that. It's illegal to apply this square just to this number and to this symbol here. You must do the multiplication, the full multiplication, 
and come up with these three terms. Ask your instructor if you're not familiar with this, uh, this step. Then again, we've divided by 10 to the 22nd on, the, on both sides, so we just have 7.3 to uh, uh, deal with in front of the x squared. Now, distributing the 597 through the square bracket, it has to be multiplied on every term. If you need to, pause your uh, video and check this with your calculator. Next, I'm gathering together like terms, and I'm keeping all the terms on the left side. So I'm subtracting 7.3x squared from the 597. That generates the 589.7x squared here. And we've got the same middle term and last term. So we have a quadratic equation, and it's well known how to solve a quadratic equation to use the quadratic formula. So in this formula, we do minus b. b is the coefficient of x to the first power. It is important that you carry along the minus sign with the digits that are here. So the quantity b in front of x to the first power is negative 4.585 times 10 to the eighth. Then plus or minus square root of b squared. Then there's always a minus sign at this point. And then 4 times the a value. a is the number in front of x squared times the c value. And it's important to carry along the sign of this last number, of this constant. And in this case, it's a positive. Uh, so there's our uh, underneath the, uh, the square root symbol. And then 2 times a in the denominator. So we're using this quadratic formula, x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. a is the coefficient in front of x squared b is the coefficient in front of x to the first power, c is the term that doesn't have an x, uh, just the pure number. So simplifying this a little bit, again, pause, do the calculation under here, the b squared minus 4ac, and take a square root. I believe you will obtain 5.0672 times 10 to the seventh. So the quadratic equation gives us two solutions, the quadratic formula does. If I use the plus sign, so I'm doing 4.585 times 10 to the 8th plus 5.0672 times 10 to the 7th and do the division here. I get 4.317 times 10 to the 5th. What's the problem with that? Well, this value is larger than the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Our expected point where we're going to balance the two forces is in between the Earth and the Moon. And using the plus sign in the solution gives us a value out out here, out here. Uh, this is a mathematical solution. And where it is, it's the point over on to the right of the moon, where again, the force of gravity from the Earth and from the moon have the same size. But it's not going to produce a balance because both forces will be acting to the left on some Apollo spacecraft that's to the right of the moon. So what we need to do is evaluate the minus sign. And with the minus sign, we obtain 3.458 times 10 to the fifth. It is smaller than the 3.84 times 10 to the fifth separation between the Earth and the Moon. So this number I would deem just on that basis to be OK. Um, so going just uh, the next step here, uh, this is the distance from the center of the Earth to the Apollo spacecraft. We might wonder, what is the distance from the moon, center of the moon to the Apollo spacecraft. And what we find is um, 38,000 kilometers, 38,000 kilometers from the center of the moon. That's the place where the two forces balance. And just checking this, uh, the radius of the moon is 1,700 kilometers, roughly. So we're larger than that. So just on that basis, I might deem that uh, the solution is OK. Um, so there you have it. We found just a simple calculation with nothing moving, just in a straight line. Um, we can calculate the position where the force of gravity from the Earth on the Apollo spacecraft is the same size as the force of the Moon on the Apollo spacecraft. Just an interesting calculation. Um, it's not a surprise that we are very close to the Moon, just 38,000 kilometers, where we're 384,000 kilometers between the uh, 
center of the Earth and center of the Moon. The Moon is 81 times less massive than the Earth, so we should expect this balance point to be close to the Moon. So ask your instructor if you have any questions on this. Replay the video if necessary. And if you want to uh, view a list of my YouTube videos, these two websites are free, no registration. You'll see a description of the video and you'll find a direct link to the YouTube video. But keep practicing on your own.